seriously? Hey, hey guys, and welcome to this conversion showcase video with me, Six Plus Stevo. So, in this one, I am going to be showing you well, you can see what I'm showing you. I'm showing you my big mech in Mega Armor. And uh, this guy is kitted out with some serious, serious DACA. Um, <clears throat> I'll go back a little bit and tell you what my original plan was. Basically, as most of you who watch the channel regularly know, I am a Bad Moon player. So I'm all about the DACA. And now my original plan was, before the Codex came out, I wanted to convert and kitbash and customize a custom war boss for my army. And I had big plans for him. I wanted him to, I wanted something really special. I had this plan in my mind of a war boss that just had so much teeth, you know, so much money that he could just have the absolute best firepower possible and uh, the best armor possible and just all the best gear. So I had this big plans that this war boss was gonna be covered in mega armor, bristling with DACA, and then the codex came out and we lost war bosses in mega armor, which is, it still stings that that's happened. It's a real shame, but we do still have big mechs in mega armor only. We do not have big mechs without mega armor. <laughs> Um, if you want to see my old Big Mechs that I did, you can see that. I'll pop a link on the screen, which should be appearing about now. And you can see my old conversions of two Big Mechs I did with KFFs. Um, but although we can still use them using the index rules, I don't know how long that's going to be viable for. Uh, so I really wanted to sort of do pure Codex Army, really. So I had to change my way of thinking and um, the sort of storyline and everything for my warlord of my army uh, he's no longer going to be a war boss he is going to be now as you can see a big mech so i kept the same theme in i wanted a big mech in mega armor fancy gear fancy weapons and being a bad moon he's all about showing off and being a glory hog and uh, just having the best gear possible and uh, he's got the teeth to buy the stuff and he's a big mech so he's got the knowledge to build this stuff himself and if he builds something really really amazing and incredible he's not going to give it away for one of his knobs or boys to use he's going to keep it for himself because that's the kind of boss he is so yeah here he is in all his glory this is Gazbad now Watch the camera there. So, what have I done with this guy? Well, first off, before I talk about exactly what I've done, I want to tell you about the war gear and weapons that he's armed with. So, as you can see, he is a big mech in Mega Armor. Now, I've given him the Bad Moon Warlord trait um, that gives him the 4 plus invulnerable save. So, he's going to be tough to kill this guy. He's got his 2 plus armor save and a 4 plus invulnerable save. And that's really good because I have not given him the custom force field. And there's a good reason for that. Like I said, this guy's a glory hog. He's not there to support and uh, protect your other troops in the army. He's there to hog all the glory for himself. And he's only concerned with self-preservation and uh, getting all the best stuff for himself. So he doesn't have the KFF. What he has instead is this big ass teleport blaster. Now this is the standard thing that just comes in the kit. I haven't customized or converted that at all. But I love it. I just think it looks awesome. It almost looks like uh, sort of surgeon lights when you're down in surgery or at the dentist, but uh, a little bit nastier than that. And uh, yeah, it just it, it gives him the appearance of being absolutely bristling with DACA. I absolutely love it. Um, now, the rest of his body and his power claw and everything there is all standard issue. It's all just straight out of the Mega Knob set. Where I've differed slightly is first off is a head swap just a simple head swap from the standard knob skit and i love this head um, this was the same head that i used on one of my earlier big mechs with kff it's just the perfect 
one to use for a big mech i think i love the sort of robocop looking sort of uh visor lens for, for the eyes i love that and the sort of uh the smokestack exhaust thing coming out of his mouth with the tube it's just uh yeah he screams big mech i think and i just think it gives him so much personality and makes him look that little bit more special but uh yeah the big conversion and the big bit that took me the most time is of course his weapon so yeah he's got the warlord trait bad moon warlord trait the, the four plus invun save but i've also given him the shiny gubbins the bad moon exclusive to gobshot thunderbus and the cool thing about that is that that replaces a um, custom shooter or a combi shooter so i've given him the combi scorcher and uh, so this guy is pumping out a serious stacker. He gets three shots from the teleport blaster. The gobshot thunderbus fires heavy 2d6 shots of 12 inch range, strength five, AP minus one, damage one. So really nice auto hitting weapon. That's right. The special abilities of this weapon is that it automatically hits its target. So that's really cool in the hands of an orc. Um, but then he's also got the benefit of having the Scorcher as well, which he can also fire, which is a further D6 auto hits. And uh, that's obviously only got a 9-inch range. Now, that means he's spitting out 3D6 auto hits when he's within range, plus the three shots from his Teleport Blaster. Let me just squeeze him on there a bit. Like I said, he's just held on with blue tack currently just for ease of painting later on um so yeah he's spitting out some serious dacker um he has a potential of 21 shots basically um which i think is just awesome so and they're auto hitting as well so he's going to be getting that in overwatch if people charge him um so yeah he's going to be quite hard to shift and he's going to be a bit of a thorn in the side of the enemy i think and then he's going to be no slouch in combat because he's got his power claw there um but anyway how did i go about converting this well the original idea was to use uh from the killer can set the um grotzuka i thought that would look really cool because when you read the description of this uh gobshot thunderbus let me just read it out to you Requiring an entire chest of teeth to be loaded into its breech before each shot, the gobshot thunderbus, worky gubbins plates its unconventional ammunition in gold before firing it at an inescapable cone of fanged death. Not only can this madcap weapon sweep away swathes of enemies with each shot, it also fires literal fortune in teeth every time, proclaiming its owner's obscene wealth in the process. Um... I love the description of that thing. And uh, yeah, so when I saw the uh, Grotzuka from the Killer Cans, I thought that's the prime candidate because that's basically doing the same thing but firing out scrap. Um, so I thought with a bit of a paint job, putting the gold in, looking like he's just firing out gold teeth at the enemy, I thought that would look really, really cool. Um, but when I came to actually sort of converting it and putting it on him, it looked a bit ridiculous it was a bit oversized and because i'd gone for the teleport blaster at the same time um the actual loading mechanism of it the hopper kind of obscured the teleport blaster and it just didn't look functional it looked ungainly and unwieldy even for an orc it just looked stupid in my opinion so i decided to scrap that idea um and it i was playing around for ages trying to get various things to work and nothing was quite sitting right in the end I ended up sawing the end off it because I really like the actual barrel bit itself. That was the main part to get on there, this bit. So I basically sawed through and just cut this end bit off, ready to mount it on. Then I took a scorcher from a death dread and cut off one of the barrels, the sort of the, the fuel canister part of the scorcher. Um, glued that on to the bit here which came out of another mega knob set which would usually the well, same as on the other side holds the power claw in um, but that became a really good mounting area for this barrel to give the sort of main barrel of the gun and then just glued the parts together like that 
Um, I then added on just a bit of ornamentation here, which would usually go around the groin area, just to sort of hang in chains. I thought that just, it looked a little bit sort of empty. So I decided to add that on just to add a little bit of a flair to the gun. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased of how it's come out, actually. I think it looks really cool. Now, the original idea was to include a scorcher element on it. And I tried that in various ways. I was going to put the scorch a bit underneath so it looked like it had an undermounted scorcher on there as well. I also played around with the idea of mounting a scorcher on this arm so he looked like he was holding two separate guns. But then I didn't know what I was going to do with the power claw. I played around with the idea of having like a, a arm coming out the back, like a mechanical arm with the power claw on to add to that big mech feel. But when I was trying various things, he just looked too busy and it looked like there was too much going on with these teleport blasters on his back. Um, so I decided to keep the power claw standard. Um, but then as I was building it, I kind of thought to myself, well, this is going to be basically a counts as. So this counts as the Thunderbus, which is obviously 12 inch range, 2d6 auto hitting. And I thought with the Scorcher part of it, that's basically doing the same thing at nine inch range, just an extra D6. So I thought with this gun, basically at 12 inch range, he's getting two D6 auto hits. And once we're in nine inch, he's getting three D6 because I'm thinking this is like a blunderbuss type weapon that fires out scrap in a big arc, basically. Um, big load of shrapnel firing in all directions. And uh, the closer you get, the more deadly that's gonna be. So it just kind of makes sense. And I think it works rules wise that that's going to be a counts as combi scorcher with thunderbus um, because it just means the closer you get to the business end of this thing the more danger you're going to be in and so if you're within nine inches you're going to be getting 3d6 auto hits from this thing at 12 inches you're going to be suffering 2d6 auto hits and uh, i think that works quite well and uh, like i said just trying to fit a scorcher on there it just wasn't really working. It looked a bit too busy. Um, it, it just, I couldn't get it in a way where it just worked right. But actually, the way it's come off, I'm really pleased with it. And I think he looks really cool. He looks really characterful. And he's the perfect warlord to lead my bad moon bunch of orcs um, with all the dacker they're going to be spitting out. And uh, what better way to represent bad moons than with a dacker focused warlord? So yeah, he's going to be the man in my army, I think. I also love the way it kind of uh, um, looks like a Mega Man, if any of you are familiar with that. Like he's got the sort of the arm cannon, like Mega Man style, um, which adds to that sort of uh, mechanical feel of him, like uh, some of his body parts have been chopped off, and he's obviously had a lot of uh, work done with his uh, cybernetics and things. He's been patched up a few times and modified. So, yeah, there you go, guys. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you and show you my um, conversion. I plan to get this guy painted fairly soon. And uh, once I do, I shall uh, show him on the channel again and you'll see him in all his glory. Also, I may um, just sort of mount him on something on the base, some scenery or something underneath him, um, just to give him a little bit more height so he stands above the rest of the Mega Knobs and my other big mechs. But, yeah, there you go, guys anyway that's enough from me this is six bus steve -O, signing out